I like when Eric Mangini disagrees with me, and he was listening to my previous rant, and he wants to take me to task like a surrogate father. He's going to come in with a ruler here and say, listen, young man, you're wrong. Fox Sports analyst. So I don't like, I don't, listen, I understand. I've seen this before. And I was talking to somebody else about this uh, years ago and that sometimes the coordinator is a hot shot and they want to get a job and they want to show off a little. And, you know, coaches are like, in fact, this was Belichick years ago, told a friend of mine this about Josh McDaniels. He goes, I love Josh. He, he's trying to show the world how good he is. I'm trying to win games. So you, <laughs> and it, it, there is some truth to that. You probably dealt with that as a head coach. So you thought McCarthy's basic premise was okay. Yeah, a- absolutely. You've got to take a global view as, as the head coach. And and this happens with coordinators. And, and what Bill was saying with, with Josh at the time, I could see that happening, happening too. And, and it's, it's not necessarily the fault of the coordinator. They're, they're thinking in terms of what's best for the offense. Sure. And also what, what looks best for me. And, and there'll be times where, where they want splash plays. They want things that are exciting, going to be talked about, that, that may be unnecessary risks and not, not the, the best complimentary football. I, I, I liked what Mike McCarthy said. And when you look at the Cowboys, they were best when they run the, ran the ball first over the course of Dak's career when they ran the ball first and then let him build off of that. They've got two offensive tackles that are, are much better run blockers than they are pass blockers. Fair. That's fair. And, and they remember that whole that whole period where we went with let Dak cook, you know, building off the let Russ cook. And then every time he's thrown over fifty times, he's got a terrible win loss record. Yeah. So so for him to say he wanted to be a run first and 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 uh and not worry about about getting someone a head coaching job, that makes total sense to me. No, I think your point is, too, their tackles are better run blockers than pass blockers. Tyron Smith at this point probably has a year left. This is probably the last year. That's a, that's a fair point. Um, so I, I, I saw this survey came out from players about facilities, nutrition, strength training, uh, NFLPA, 1,300 players graded their teams. Arizona did not do well. <laughs> <laughs> the commanders. And by the way, I don't love the owner for either. Um, how big of a deal is it for free agents to have nice facilities? Arizona and Washington graded terribly. Does it matter? I, I love the survey. I, I, I wish the survey was around when I was a head coach. I think I would have graded out poorly in, in a couple of categories. But being able to get that feedback, not only from, from your team, but how your team rates versus other teams it always amazed me that you, when you've got a salary cap as big as you have in the NFL, that you'd skimp on any uh, any of the services related to the players. Why wouldn't you invest as much as you possibly could during the course of the week for for your two hundred plus million dollar salary cap players? And and, and you're going to skimp on whether it's meals or treatments or, or the size or the quality of the classrooms or, or take your pick. It, you should have the best of the best so that you're maximizing your teaching and learning potential for your guys. I think, I think it's great. I'm I'm glad they're doing it. Um, Yeah. It's it's like a job review. Nobody, (laughs) everybody's uncomfortable with it, but you probably need to know what you're not good at. But Colin also makes it easier for you to go to your owner and say, look, this is where we're ranking. It's going to be hard to bring guys in here. And there's a, you may have to pay a premium to get a free agency because you rank poorly. So instead of, paying what market value is, you got to pay over that. And and no owner wants to hear that either. Arizona literally graded F minus on nutrition. It's like they're in there serving half and half and, and pecans. <laughs> like, well, who gets an F minus in nutrition? It's impossible. I didn't even know that was possible. <laughs> okay. So listen, sometimes something happens and it's unique and it's rare. And I mean, I grew up in the Northwest. Sometimes you get a sunny day in February. That's not really what it is, but you get them. And I look at all these small quarterbacks. In the last four small quarterbacks in the first round, Johnny Manziel, Kyler Baker, and Tua, how's it working out? I looked at a picture, video of Bryce Young walking next to a tight end, and I said, that's not what Peyton Manning and Dallas Clark look like. I don't like it. You tell me. Five, ten and a half, 190. It bothers me. Yeah, when, when you're talking about the, the first round and you're talking about the top end of the first round or you're top, talking about – the first draft pick overall, you want to be able to check every single box. And that doesn't mean that, that 
smaller quarterbacks haven't been very productive. Doesn't mean they can't be successful, but but going into it, drafting that high with a guy that's got to overcome a, a disadvantage like that, it's it's hard to get your head around, and it's it's hard to advocate for that. And it's not it's not just the height and seeing over guys, but it's also he's he's not got a big frame. He's got kind of a slight frame too. Yeah. So the amount of hits that he's going to take from from big men on a consistent basis. The, the the odds of getting injured, I think, go up as well. I could see Bryce watching this and think, "Could you could you stop showing the same four second clip over and over?" <laughs> um, but you know, Russell Wilson gets drafted in the in the later rounds because of, because of height, and and that's usually what happens is you're going to take a chance on a guy, but you don't want to be taking a chance on a guy with the number one overall draft pick. So I started talking about something about five weeks ago, and everybody freaked out. And now everybody's talking about it. Once again, we're, you know, we're willing to talk about this uncomfortable stuff is two years into, I saw Jalen Hurts and Josh Allen make huge leaps. I got two years of Justin Fields, and I haven't seen a huge leap. And you can say the O-line's not great, but it's ranked 14th, and the Giants is 32nd. And you can say the receivers aren't good, but Cole Komet's better than the Giants' tight end. Darnell Mooney would start for the Giants, and Chase Claypool's c- clearly competent, and their backs are serviceable. It ain't great, but the Giants' offense outside of Saquon Barkley, they got nothing, and they won a playoff game. So my takeaway is I got two years here. You got to take a phone call on Justin Fields. I think I'd keep him. I think he can work. Um, you have the pick. You're the Bears. What would you be doing right now if you just lost 10 games in a row and he was part of that losing streak and you had the number one pick? Yeah, you've got you've got to look at every possible quarterback and you've got to look at, as to whether or not you can upgrade. And and it's not a knock on, on the, the splash plays that Justin Fields made and the way that he's been productive. But your point at, at the top is absolutely right. Where's where's the growth? Where's where is the the, the curve or the arrow pointing up? To where you can say in a couple years from now, this guy's going to be a, a significantly better right. passer. Right. And and so so now you're gonna you're gonna put another year into it, and, and you see marginal growth. That that's not going to be good enough to win on a consistent basis. And and when you run as much as 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 he does, it's it's the same thing we see with all these running quarterbacks. They're bound to to get hurt because of the amount of hits they take. It's it's not. It's just not sustainable. So I, I would look at every quarterback, see if one makes sense. And and then, you know, if, if you're going to move or, or stay with them, try to leverage the pick as best you can. It's just, just hard when there's not an elite quarterback to get as much as you should for that number one overall pick. So you're on the, you're on the, you do whatever Aaron Rodgers wants and you just pay him and you take care of it. And I, I get that. But no, 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 I'm not on that. Green Bay was on that, and they did that already. So they're they're stuck now. Okay. So um, Kyler's different. Uh, Aaron, there are quarterbacks that – Russell Wilson, by the way, is, you know, some people think inauthentic, overly optimistic, blah, blah, blah. Not every not everybody's Brady. Like, we got to get over it. Like, these are human beings, not human doings. They have different personalities. Um, but would you – this is the one part that's funny. I say, <laughs> if I told my wife – like we were going through some problems, and I said I'm going to go to I'm going to go to Vegas with the boys for four days. When I get back, I should be closer to a decision on if I want to keep the marriage going. She'd be like, <laughs> "It's over." <laughs> when you go on a retreat, and you come back after a retreat, and you're like, "You know, I'm closer to making a decision." Isn't that kind of sticking it to the packet just a little bit? Just don't. Wouldn't you feel a little bit like it's like, brother, four days in a dark room? You can't get a decision after that. Right? What do you make of that? Well, I, I think that Aaron Rodgers probably felt like, okay, I was in the MVP of the league. You draft a quarterback in the first round. Isn't that sticking it to me a little bit? And then when they traded away his buddies, isn't that without talking to him? Isn't that sticking? I think he's got a little bit of that in him, Colin. Where, as we know, if if there's if there's this harmony in a, in a marriage, usually it's not one partner responsible for for the whole thing. It's 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 both sides now with Aaron's talent and, and with with um, the things that he's been able to do. You're going to you're going to live with some moodiness. You're going to live with some of the stuff that, that he's done. Green Bay hasn't experienced life without an elite quarterback. 
And and I think if they had, they would be even more patient with, with Aaron Rodgers and his retreat in darkness. Yeah. Yeah. Would you? Would you're, not, you you're not buying that, Colin? Well, I think it's all part of the discussion. Would you? Because I got kids. I can't I, I can't do that stuff. I, I got too many things moving. Would you go on a four-day retreat at this point in your life? <laughs> would you do a darkness retreat? I, I don't think I would do a darkness re- retreat, but that trip to Vegas with, with my boys sounds pretty good. <laughs> I, might, I would probably sign up for that. That, that, that could lead to darkness. <laughs> Believe yeah, me. That could lead to too darkness. Too much rum and there'll be darkness. Okay. Uh, Eric, good seeing you. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.